A move on to the foreign scene. We hear schools in England have been given few restrictions on how they will be able to operate when pupils return in autumn. The Guardians, the Guardians, published by the Department for Education, imposes only a handful of demands, principally that primary and secondary schools divide pupils into bubbles of entire classes or year groups, which in larger secondary schools will include hundreds of children. But few social distancing measures will be required within schools, with much of the advice left to school leaders to interpret, including recommendations about staggering school start and finish times. Children and staff will not be required to wear face masks in schools, but children over the age of 11 traveling on public transport will need to wear a mask or face covering and maintain social distancing. Joining us now is the Community Relations Officer, Suzanne Ogunye. Thank you for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you give us an insight uh, into the resumption plan and what is the mood of the average parent about the, you know, the decision to open the school and the decision not to wear a face mask there? I mean, the, as you said, the resumption plan is actually for September. Um, initially, there was a plan to bring in as many students as possible for June, but that didn't work. It only worked for a few students like uh, reception, nursery, year one and uh, year six. So the secondary schools did not go at all, meaning a whole six months without going back to school. A lot of parents uh, were upset about this, but we knew the whole reason this was put into place because the, there was practically no way at all with the space in the classes, in the schools, there was no way that there would be too much interaction which would cause them more chances of the disease being spread and then they bring it home to their parents and especially vulnerable parents for that matter. Are, are so, they um, willing to so allow their children go to school, um, even knowing that there is a possibility they could contract the virus? Yes, yeah, so, some parents, what, what happened like in June now, uh, sorry, June just gone, we're in July, aren't we? Some parents did not take their kids at all and um, nobody was mapped as absent. It was accepted that you had the option of allowing your kids to go or not. But bear in mind, I'm talking about primary school now. Secondary school was not playing uh, a chance at all. The only people in secondary school they were looking at was the people who had to do the GCSEs and the A-levels. Those are the only two uh, classes that they thought of that could come in. And yet again, it wasn't all schools because of the size, you see. No one saw this coming. So the, the sizes of some classrooms cannot allow this to happen. Some parents just decided not to let their kids go to the primary school at all because they were scared. Some parents like myself, I, I have a daughter, she's six in September, she's in reception. I allowed it purely because I knew what was in place in school. I had seen the video of the safety measures they had and um, I was okay with it. But at the same time, as a parent, I had to think of my own safety measures at home. Like when I bring my daughter back home, I just take off her uniform straight away, which is not what you normally do, isn't it? But you have to think out of the box here. That how can I protect everyone else in the house? Okay, I are, are there grounds? Are there grounds? Sorry to interrupt you. Are, are there yes, grounds yes. for this concern? Um, maybe by data showing the number of children that are getting infected with the virus, or is it just a precautionary a parental care concern? There, there are grounds. That's correct because there's a union of teachers which have already got the schools ready, like I said. They've been ready in place to protect the students and the teachers. However, parents, it's like what Boris said, if you remember what he said a, a few weeks back about common sense, parents have to decide and use their common sense if they want them to go back to school or they're happy for them to be homeschooled, which everyone has been homeschooled anyway. So everyone has had to make a decision. It's been very difficult. It's not so straightforward because there's still that fear, even at the back of my mind, but we have to remember that it's better for them to be at school, provided the school keeps the school safe. They do cleansing every single day. Everything has changed. They have social distancing meters marked on the floors as you enter the school, so you cannot go beyond a bubble to another parent or even the teacher. So it's really been well organized and okay. safe. 
Uh, what's your assessment? Because uh, parents, we know across the globe, not just in the UK, have you know uh, resorted to e-learning. Uh, e what is your assessment of the quality of learning that is being provided online? And do you think it's enough to prepare these students and pupils as well for when uh, the resumption uh, comes? No, I mean I'm I'm a, I'm a home a working home mom. My kids have been homeschooling since the lockdown in March, and I can tell you learning from home is very difficult for them. Kids are used to being in a classroom. Kids are not used to everyday homeschooling on a computer. Yes, the teachers are there to assist, but it is not the same. The one-to-one -one communication they get, they do not get that anymore. And I'm sure, I'm speaking for all parents, you get the, the, the possibility where kids just die, they divert from what they're doing. I constantly chasing kids to get off from playing computer games it's very, very hard. It's, you cannot compare. Okay. They, they, they're best being in school. We can only imagine. Thank you so much. And uh, continue to do your best. That's all anyone can ask. Do take care. Thank you very much.